All right, welcome everybody. This uh, workshop is going to be about the scheduling machine learning pipelines uh, using Apache Airflow. So talking about pipelines, I already had some nice experiences this morning with pipelines because I was trying to, uh, to travel here by train and there was a gas leakage near Best, so I was stuck at uh, the station of uh, Den Bosch. So nice, uh, nice intro about uh, these pipelines. <laughs> So well, what are we going to do today? We, we're going to start with a little introduction from ourselves, so for me and uh, from uh, my colleague Dick and our company. We are going to give you a little introduction in what, what is Apache Airflow, how, how can you use it. And after that, we're going to jump right in the, the hands-on to, uh, yeah, to get you uh, coding right away and uh, get some experience with, uh, with the tool. So uh, yeah, we're, uh, I'm Axel, Axel Goblet. I'm a data scientist at uh, Big Data Republic. And uh, my, my colleague Dick is uh, standing in the corner there. He works as a data engineer uh, at Big Data Republic. We are uh, a, a data consultancy firm located in uh, Nieuwegein, near, uh, near Utrecht. So we, uh, we do cool projects around uh, data for uh, various customers. So customers we, uh, we work with is, uh, for example, K KLM or Randstad and uh, a lot of the big, uh, big corporates in the Netherlands. And also, we're, uh, we're hiring, by the way. So in case you, you like this stuff, uh, yeah, just leave, drop us a message or uh, come over uh, after the talk. So we're going to learn three things today. First one is, what is Airflow? And uh, why is it actually useful? And when is it useful? How to schedule a machine learning pipeline using Apache Airflow? And lastly, how can you customize Airflow to, to suit it to your needs in case you, uh, you want to do anything that's not possible with the, with the standard uh, deployment of Airflow? So a um, little yeah, round uh, before. So who has never heard of uh, Airflow before, aside from uh, this talk? OK, OK. Who has actually worked with Airflow before? OK, so quite some, uh, some hands there. Who has done something with, with machine learning with Airflow before? OK, two there. So yeah, you might get a bit bored, but we have some uh, advanced exercises at, yeah. at the end as well for you. I think for the others, uh, it's going to be uh, a nice ride. So to, to give you a little context about the tool, uh, in the previous workshop, you built uh, a really nice uh, machine learning model using uh, deep learning probably used uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch or something uh, for this. So assume you, you built this model and it, uh, it works really well and um, you, uh, you want to actually sell it to someone or uh, use it uh, in a production setting. For example, if you uh, were for a government who wants to check which houses uh, they need to uh, yeah, take care of if there is a, a storm coming. And what you want to do is you want to uh, take this model and have it make predictions every month for you, such that every month you can yeah, make a plan for the next month about which, uh, which houses might be, uh, might be in danger, for example. Well, that, uh, that would be a use case where uh, you could use uh, Apache Airflow to do so. so. So what is Apache Airflow? Apache Airflow is a, a, a platform to programmatically author schedule and monitor workflows. So it's a whole mouthful. And uh, a workflow here means basically uh, uh, a piece of work, or so a sequence of uh, tasks that need to be executed in a particular order. I'm going to uh, put, uh, put, put some examples here as well uh, after. And so yeah, Airflow allows you to, to schedule these workflows. So for example, run them uh, once a month or once a week or, uh, or every day. Uh, author them to yeah define them actually and say which tasks need to be executed and uh, to monitor them so check whether things go right and if things go wrong also uh, alert that uh, things went sideways so you can uh, intervene directly such that uh, your customers are uh, are always uh, happy so let's do a little example here so uh, uh, one of the famous examples and one of the main use cases for Airflow is actually uh, ETL, which stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. So assume you uh, have two APIs where you want to uh, retrieve some uh, data from, API A and API B. 
and you want to eventually you want to join these data sets and store them somewhere else, for example, to, to train a super cool uh, machine learning model on, then uh, yeah, this will be a workflow. You would have to get data from uh, API, API A, get data from API B. You could do this uh, in parallel because they're, they're not dependent on each other. And once both uh, of these data sets are uh, yeah, at your uh, servers, you can uh, eventually join them and uh, store them in, uh, in their joint format. Another example would be a machine learning uh, batch inference. So that's also what we're going to do today. Where it's something you did in the previous um, workshop. You pre-processed some data probably and uh, you trained uh, a machine learning model. And later you want to use this model to actually make predictions with this. So you want to pre-process some unlabeled data that you have no, uh, yeah, no labels of yet and you want to uh, combine them with uh, your trained model to actually predict these unlabeled uh, examples and act upon uh, the predictions. So yeah, we can do this with Airflow, but there are probably also uh, yeah, some other ways to do it. We could use something like a Windows uh, task scheduler. It allows you to run a program every, uh, every day or whenever you start your computer. We could use uh, cron, it's like Windows Task Scheduler, but then uh, for Linux. But uh, yeah, they, they don't have nice features like, uh, like Airflow has. And uh, I'm going to show you three of the features that I really like about Airflow. But in the um, uh, hands-on, you will actually learn uh, much of the other uh, features that are included. So one of the really cool features of Airflow is that all your configuration is actually uh, Python code. So it's uh, yeah, familiar to all people that do things with data nowadays because everything uh, around data is usually in Python. And uh, it, allows you, it allows you to create dynamic uh, workflows. So for example, if you don't want to talk to two APIs, like in the previous example, but want to talk to 100, so you can just loop over a list and uh, create a workflow that uh, works over 100 APIs instead of uh, writing 100 of these, uh, these blocks like you would have to do with Windows Task Scheduler. Um, it uh, manages connections for you because Airflow is a tool that's originated as an uh, ETL tool. So it allows you to easily connect with uh, all sorts of external systems. So all the big cloud providers, big, uh, big and small databases, they're all included in Airflow and you can easily uh, yeah, uh, combine them and get data from them or send the data there. And it also allows you to safely store these credentials. You don't want to put your credentials right in the code because then if someone uh, reaches your code base, you can just uh, hack your database and that, uh, that wouldn't be very nice. And lately, it's, uh, it's a distributed system. So it uh, allows you to run many pa uh, tasks in parallel, as we saw, for example, with the two API cases where yeah, you don't have to wait for the first block to finish before you can start the second one like you would have to do in a, in a normal script, but you can run them uh, in parallel. And also because it's distributed, we can choose where to run tasks. So we could run very large tasks, for example, a task that, um, this, that processes gigabytes uh, of data. We could run it on different nodes or even on different systems, which makes uh, the whole workflow uh, much more efficient. So uh, a bit about the architecture of Airflow. Airflow consists of uh, a few services that uh, are run in parallel, actually. And they're combined by uh, a shared layer of storage. And in this layer of storage, you store your workflows, so the definitions you, uh, you created about what work you want uh, to be executed. Some logs about yeah, what happens in these workflows and did things uh, crash or did they successfully run. And there's some metadata, so what, what workflows have run and when, and what workflows are planned uh, to, to be run in the future. Then the, the heart of Airflow is uh, the scheduler. The scheduler basically scans all your workflows over and over again, and your workflows are just uh, pieces of Python code, and he, he checks which workflows need to be run. So if you have a workflow that has to be run once a week on Monday, and um, it is Monday, then the scheduler says, oh wait, there is a, a workflow that has to, to run on Monday. I haven't started it yet, so I better hurry up and, uh, and get this workflow uh, started. And also if it 
take some more time, the scheduler makes sure that eventually all your workflows that should have been run will, uh, will be run. Now then the scheduler, he, uh, he chooses which workflows need to be run and he distributes this work over uh, an array of, uh, of workers. So this could be uh, a single machine, it could be actually the same machine as the scheduler, which in your case for uh, the uh, um, hands-on will be the case, but it could also be uh, a cluster of nodes where through a, through a queue, for example, the scheduler can distribute uh, this work. And then each of these workers will uh, pick up uh, a task and uh, yeah, execute it. And these workers are the, the pieces of uh, software that actually communicate with these external systems. So they uh, retrieve the connection information we talked about before and they're, they're able to, uh, to talk to external systems. So they could get data from uh, different APIs or they could get data from a database to eventually train a machine mo learning model with. And to, uh, to monitor all of this, there is uh, a last part. This is a web server. And the web server is the, well, the gate between uh, the user, us, and, uh, and Airflow. So it provides us with a dashboard to, uh, to actually see the status of all our different workflows, which have finished, which, ha which have failed, and uh, the logs of them, so that we can, uh, can monitor them and debug them uh, if uh, that's necessary. So what we are going to do in this um, hands-on is we, we provide the, all this for you, so you don't have to set up anything uh, yourself. We set up uh, the system in uh, uh, the AWS uh, cloud for you, so everyone gets its own, uh, um, own instance of Airflow. And we also added a, a Jupyter Notebook server to it, such that uh, you can write your code and your workflows in this Jupyter Notebook and uh, yeah, put it in this uh, shared storage and it will get uh, yeah, imported into Airflow uh, automatically then. So yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into the, uh, um, the practical right away. The, uh, all the uh, exercises are uh, explained in there and um, yeah, it should be kind of self-explanatory. If there are questions, we, um, yeah, we are around and if there are a lot of questions about the same topic, I'm also going to uh, yeah, do publicly uh, answer these questions. So what, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, give you a, so a piece of paper and there is an address and a user and a password on there. So you're going to go to that address and go to slash user slash Jupyter. Don't forget to not put a trailing slash because else it will not find uh, the thing. It does the round thing not correctly. And in there, there will be a notebook called workshop.ipynb. And uh, it's from there, you can uh, just start reading and uh, start working uh, right away. Okay. So, um, yeah, the, the workshop will end in, uh, in a few minutes. After that, the, uh, uh, all the resources you're using now, they will uh, be destroyed. So you won't be able to actually do the workshop after, the, uh, after in about five minutes. What we will do is uh, next week we will uh, share the, the slides and the, uh, the notebook with you through, uh, through our LinkedIn uh, page. So yeah, don't forget to, uh, to follow us there and uh, yeah, you can try to, uh, to replicate it yourself on, uh, on your own machine. So uh, yeah, the LinkedIn is uh, Big Data Republic, should be uh, easily found. And Big Data in one word, which is quite funny. I don't know why I did. <laughs>